Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. We're, we're ready, ready to, to, to party. Oh, oh. We're ready to party. We're ready. Yeah. I hope you bring lots of spaghetti. I'm scared. Come on in, come to the place where fun never ends. Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends. Oh. Fiesta, romance, siesta, samba, la bamba, ay caramba, disguises, disguises, surprises, surprises, and pies of, and pies of all sizes. Come on in, come to the place where fun never ends. Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends. Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends. Garfield and friends. Everything else you watch on TV this week will just be anticlimactic. Sometime around the year 11 and a half, the world was a more barren place. One could walk for miles and not see signs of civilized life. It was a lot like Los Angeles, but without the taco stands. Many bedraggled travelers gathered at a small inn where one man ruled by his sheer strength. His name was Bork, leader of the nomadic hordes and winner of a whole lot of push-up contests. <coughs> food must have food! At once, sire. <laughs> the lovely Mariah served everyone in the inn. Of course, Bork was the only one who ever got any food. <laughs> Here is more meat, sire. And we had time to cook this batch. More! Bring me more! He made it clear to all that Mariah was his woman and no one had better so much as look at her, a favorite pastime of a lovesick peasant with the unlikely name and trade of John the Cartoonist. John would sit in the inn for hours drawing pictures of Mariah. Every night he tortured himself this way, for he knew she could never be his. Sire, if you leave any, may I give it to the stray cats who gather at our back door? I will leave none. Now, in this savage time, even pussycats roamed wild. No matter how much Bork ate, Mariah always found some food every night for the handsome cat. Meow. Purr. Meow. Hey, in these barbaric times, you do what you have to do to get fed. More food! More food! I gave you some leftover goat's feet, kitten. I have to go. Goat's feet? What about cheeseburgers? How about a pastrami on rye? Would a sausage pizza hurt you? A couple of three-minute eggs? I'm not eating like this. I'm sure some wandering diner will share his meal. More food! More food! Hi. I was wondering if you could spare a, oh, a leg of lamb or a couple of prime rib or a... Get out of here! I'm out of here. Mm. Goat's feet. Yummy. And so every day, Bork led his men into battle. Mariah could only prepare for his inevitable return. Mariah. It is for your own good if we are not seen together, cartoonist. If someone told Bork... What... Let them tell him. I would risk everything for you, Mariah. You risk everything by just talking to me, my dear John. I have drawn these cartoons of us in eternal happiness together. Oh, I'm sure they are splendid, but I could not bear to see a future that can never be. But the cat saw distinct dining possibilities if he could get this Bork dude out of circulation. He followed the cartoonist home to his squalid little dwelling and somehow managed to convey to him the idea that he, the cat, could help. You can get Mariah from me, cat? What do I need to do? I have to become heroic and strong? This may take a while, like until half past the Renaissance. There seemed to be only one way to make a man out of him, given the rather limited parts catalog. 
Sign me up as a warrior barbarian in the king's army. Quiet. Quiet. Doesn't bother me one bit. Quiet. Uh, okay. That's enough. You, you can stop now. Fine. I, I think you've made your point. He enlisted for training as a warrior and was the Army's 28th choice for service. Number 27, by the way, was a Cocker Spaniel. Good. Good. Very good. I have to go make up some more surrender flags. I have a feeling we're going to need them. The cartoonist took all your basic barbarian courses, beginning archery. A perfect shot. Of course, he can only do it once. Even swordplay 101. Whoa, 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 whoa. But it was no use. He was drummed out of the barbarian corps. I'll never be a strong warrior. I'll never defeat Bork and win the hand and heart of the lovely Mariah. But the cat had a plan B. Leave it to me, he told the skinny cartoonist. Bork was already at the inn making his usual polite dinner request. More food! More food! <laughs> you are my woman, Mariah! More food! Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? I thought you might get a giggle out of these, your glutton ship. What's that you showed him? It, it couldn't be. You wouldn't. Help! Help! Oh, my poor John. He will be slain. Not if my plan works, lady. Keep Bork's dinner warm for me. Stop! Don't hurt me! That way. I don't know why I listened to you. Where is he? Where is he? Yoo-hoo! Right this way, right in here, in the cave. There you are. Take this, and this, and this, and this, and... Oh! Help! 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 No one ever saw Bork or the dragon ever again. John the cartoonist was eternally grateful for what the cat had done. John and Mariah got married, and they took over running the inn together. They were very happy, most of the time. More food! More food! Maybe if we turn this place into a sushi bar. Huh? What's that drip, drip noise? It's not the sink. Oh, I know what it is. There. Much better. Mail call, guys. Wade, you got a free sample of soap. <gasps> a free sample of soap? Help! Help! Free sample of soap! Oh, help! Soap for free! Oh, help! <laughs> what a coward! What a craven creature! What a highly comedic waterfowl! <laughs> uh, and Roy, you got a postcard. Your niece Chloe is coming to visit. <laughs> uh, my niece is coming to visit? Roy? Help! Help! Niece coming to visit! Help! Niece coming to visit! Help! Severe! Niece alert! Help! Copycat. Roy, what's wrong with seeing your niece? What's wrong is that I am the handsomest, most eligible rooster in the barnyard. Roy, you're the only rooster in the barnyard. Yes, I've driven off all the competition. Anywho, having a kid around cramps my style. Ah, <sighs> my, but it was cramped in that trash can. You're not kidding, fella. Oh. You're the way. Ooh, baby. 
Weasel. We were you. We he. Ten minutes later. We were. We ho. We we we. Weasel. You are the we <laughs> weasel. You are not going to get by with your weasley ways, weasel. I shall alert everyone to beware of you, weasel. Watch. Well, apart from that tree, not a bad exit. Now I think I'll go find me the tastiest chicken in the yard. You may boo me now. Hello? Have you seen my Uncle Roy? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. You you must be Chloe. Uh-huh. Where's my Uncle Roy? Ah, he, uh, well, he... Oh, what am I going to tell her? What am I going to tell her? Uh, 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 oh, he uh, had to go someplace. That's it. He had to go someplace. And he asked me to keep an eye on you. Uh-huh. He probably had a date. I got to find the youngest, tastiest looking chicken on the farm. Uh-huh. We have a winner. You may resume. Hey, do you hear somebody... Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, Natalie, you lucky hen, you. Which of the many Roys will be yours tonight? <laughs> Bonsoir, my little poisson. Uh, tell me, mademoiselle, where are you from? Oh, are you Cornish? <laughs> well, does that mean you are game? <laughs> Wait a minute. If I had a shred of dignity within my body, the slightest compassion, I would forget all about my date with Natalie and devote my every waking hour to my lovely and deserving niece, Chloe. Yes, that's what I'd do if I had even the smallest shred of dignity. Yep, that's what I'd do, all right. Okay, on with the date. Cinderella? Heard it. Uh, Sleeping Beauty? Heard it. Maybe I have some games. Thank you very much, but you don't have to entertain me. I just have to accept the fact that my Uncle Roy has things he'd rather do than be with his niece. Uh, well, I'm afraid it isn't a particularly out of the ordinary night here, except that I keep hearing someone booing. You look magnificent tonight, my dear. The way the light gently caresses your beak. Oh, Roy. <laughs> You are like a well-fluffed pillow, feathers in all the right places. Oh, Roy. <laughs> How do you think of such sweet things to say? I just look to my heart. Change the card, stupid! And my heart tells me what to say. Oh, Roy, you are so wonderful. Oh, I respect you too much to disagree with you, Natalie. Your Uncle Roy isn't a bad guy, Chloe. Then why isn't he here? Uh, well, you know, there's a very good explanation for that. Uh, well, never mind why he isn't here. Why aren't you here? Weasel tracks? Oh, no! Oh, Roy, where are you when you're needed? Roy, that dinner must have been so expensive. Tut tut, my dear. Mere chicken feed. Oh, really? With all we ate? All we ordered was chicken feed. Roy, you would be the perfect man if... If what? Oh, never mind. If what? I distinctly heard an if there. If... if you could take care of children. I think it's so important for a man to know how to take care of children. I can take care of children. I have a children. Wait here, I'll go get her. You'll see. Oh, Roy's the only one who knows his way around this part of the forest. Wow, I found a use for the kid after all. Wait, what are you doing out here? That tree leaped right out in front of me when I was trying to escape the weasel-type creature. The weasel, as in boo, the weasel? That weasel? Uno and the same-o. The weasel may be after Chloe. Hi. Weasel, where's my Chloe? Oh, it's you. <laughs> it's me, but the weasel has Chloe. What are we waiting for? I know every weasel hiding place in this forest, horse. He won't get away from me. Struggle all you want, chicken. You ain't getting away from me. And after I polish off the chick, you're next. There he is. This calls for a brilliant scheme. No, Orson. This calls for an act of blatant stupidity. I 
you reach the equator, weasel. Who is that man chasing the weasel? That, Chloe, is your Uncle Roy. That weasel won't be back till season after next. Uncle Roy, you did it. You saved me from the big bad weasel. You're my hero, Uncle Roy. Nice going, Roy. But what about your date? Uh, Natalie. I left her back outside the restaurant. Bye. Bye, Uncle Roy. Uh, Chloe. Would you like to be my date for this evening? I know a great place for ice cream. Really? Sure! Then we can watch some weasel wrestling on TV or something. Anything you say, Uncle Roy. <laughs> Normal. Want to help me change the blankets in Garfield's bed? Sure! Okay. In three, two, one. Hi, Garfield! Yeah! Thank you, Normal. My pleasure! Hey, no more sausage pizza smell. I was having such good dreams, too. That's the only way to get Garfield out of his bed long enough to change the linens. Gee, John's got everything so springtime fresh. I'll get it! You'll get it! Yes? Normal cat! That's me! Letter for you. Bye. Bye. <gasps> I got a letter, Garfield! Oh, probably another letter from one of my many admirers. Dear Normal Cat, you are here by order to appear tomorrow morning before the Kitty Council? Kitty Council? Kitty Council? What does this mean, Garfield? It means you're toast, Normal. You're through. You're history. You're over and done with. <laughs> Garfield, this isn't funny. For you it isn't funny. For me it's hysterical. <laughs> Oh, what will the Kitty Council do to me? Oh, oh I'm, I'm doomed. I'm, I'm, I'm doomed. I'm, I'm toast. I'm more than toast. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> Don't forget your appointment tomorrow morning. <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> oh, it's you, Mutsky. You interrupted a wonderful dream. It was all about a world without normal. <gasps> normal! Oh, I forgot to set my alarm. I wanted to go see him get his. Help him? You expect me to go help Nermo? It doesn't feel like you've got a fever. I don't want to help Nermo. I just want to see what the kitty council is going to do to him. Hello? Nermo Cat? Yes? I am Nermo Cat. Why was I summoned here? We will ask the questions. Sorry. Normal Cat, you are charged with a violation of Article 6, Paragraph 8 of the Feline Code. Being too darn cute. <sighs> Guilty as charged. Stop the trial. Garfield! No, to make sure you lose. You who up there, whatever you think he did, he did in spades. Garfield Cat, is that you? In person and all set to testify. Let's go. I already put myself under oath. What do I have to say? What's he charged with? He's charged with being too darn cute. A felony and an accurate one, too. And this, this cute kitten is pleading guilty to being too darn cute. 
pleading guilty. You never let me have any fun. They've got me dead to rights. Well, I guess I can live with that. Sorry for barging in like that. Bye. See you later, Garfield. No, you won't. Let's go home and celebrate, Odie. We won't have Nermal to kick around anymore. Nermal Cat, you have been found guilty of being too darn cute. That's me. For our records, have you ever committed any of these named offenses that demean the name of Cat? Played with a ball of string? Guilty. Chased your own tail? Guilty. Batted at a fly as it flitted about the room? Guilty. And finally, and believe me, this pains me as much as it does you, laid on your back and encouraged people to rub your tummy? <laughs> I did it! I did all those things! I even chased crumpled up balls of paper across the room! <laughs> Why do you do these things, Nermal? Come on outside! I'll show you! Where are you taking us, Nermal? The reason I do so many cute things is, is, well, when I do, this is what happens. Oh, Travis, look at that cute kitten. <laughs> that is the cutest kitten I have ever seen. Here, cute kitten, have a six-course prime rib dinner with mashed potatoes, gravy, carrots, and dessert. And, uh, well, here's about $600 in cash just for being so darn cute. <laughs> A cute kitten. Aren't you the most precious little kitty in the world? Yes, you is. Here's a tea bill for a thousand bucks. Come on, Oatster. Nermal's trial should be done about now. Aww. I'll bet they gave him 99 years for impersonating a real cat. You know, I'm gonna miss Nermal. Really? No, not really. I just thought I'd say that to sound noble. But it's not true. I'm glad the kitty council's throwing the book at him. They'll really give it to him. <laughs> they'll show him. They'll... <laughs> they'll... No, no, you have to pull your paws in. Roll more on your back. No, 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 you'll never get your tummy rub like that, George. No, people, people, you have to make bigger eyes. Then, then tuck your chin down like that and, and pelt more, pelt more. Nermal, you're terrific. From now on, we want all cats to be like you. Huh? Odie, would you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Take me to where I can apply to be a dog. I've decided to become a Cocker Spaniel. 